You may have heard about the recent controversial hiring of a white woman as the curator of the African Art Collection at the Brooklyn Museum. Many pointed to the problems of diversity within the museum, but what you probably haven't heard about is the call for the Brooklyn Museum to form a decolonization commission. Remember that museum scene in Black Panther? Killmongers confronted by a British curator who whitesplains the history of an African object that he is looking at. He promptly corrects her by claiming it's actually from the nation of Wakanda, adding, How do you think your ancestors got these? You think they paid a fair price? Or did they take it like they took everything else? Well, that scene in Black Panther recently hit a lot closer to home since the film came out. In an open letter, we address the hire as just a symptom of a larger structural problem and propose a decolonization commission as an opportunity to the curatorial crisis. The aim of the letter was to redress the ongoing legacies of oppression in which the museum is complicit. The call for decolonization comes from about 20 groups in the city, among which are Decolonize This Place, American Indian Community House, Brooklyn Anti-Gentrification Network, Movement to Protect the People, and NYC stands with Standing Rock. So what can a decolonization commission look like? We will have to start from the land that the museum sits on, a territorial acknowledgement that the museum is on the territory of the Lenny Lenape. The Brooklyn Museum holds over 6,000 African artifacts, making it the largest collection of African art in the United States. And while historians are often able to date the objects to very specific times and locations, information about how these objects ended up in the museum is often obscured. So we call for an inventory of all colonial era objects of both African and indigenous people with the goal of reparations and repatriation. Additionally, we call for an upgrade of working conditions and pay for ground staff, including security, food service, and janitorial divisions, who are largely people of color. The Brooklyn Museum has done some amazing shows like We Wanted a Revolution, Black Radical Women, and the current show, Radical Women, Latin American Art. But at the same time, the museum plays the huge role in the gentrification of the neighborhood. So we ask, does it just want the art and not the people? The Brooklyn Museum is by no means alone. The American Museum of Natural History literally has the skulls of African people in their collection. And the Smithsonian owns the remains of the bodies of massacred indigenous people. Yet rarely are the histories of slavery and genocide acknowledged in these museums. To be clear, this call to action was never an attack or campaign against the newly appointed white curator of African art, Kristen Wynn Muller Luna. She may very well be a highly qualified candidate, but her hiring highlights several systemic issues latent in the art world itself. Only 4% of art curators, conservators, educators, and senior museum staff in the U.S. are African American. Surrounding these conversations around diversity in the arts is a long-standing call for people of color to be able to control their own narratives. But let's be honest, the idea of repatriation is fundamentally against the interests of museums and their board members. There's a not-so-accidental link between the history of stolen indigenous artifacts and the damage to communities of color through the gentrification practices those same museums and institutions uphold. And that sentiment begs another question. Who are these museums for? Are they for the surrounding communities that their board members, including real estate tycoon David Berliner, are strategically pushing out? Are they even for the people whose cultures have been systemically stolen from them? As Audre Lorde puts it, there is no such thing as a single-issue struggle because we do not live single-issue lives. With the call for a decolonization commission, Decolonize This Place is calling for a radical examination of the foundation and structure of the institution. Radical as in going down to the roots of the United States as a settler colony. The theft of land, labor, and culture over four centuries that continues to play out today as gentrification displaces and dispossesses people of color at the doorstep of the museum itself. Will the museum listen to the communities it claims to serve? Or will it continue business as usual? Summed up in the banners dropped at last week's action, they want the art, but not the people.